Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. My name is Jack Imhoff. In this week's program, Mark Melnick and I are fishing for one of the most iconic fish of Lake Superior, the Coaster Brook Trout. Please join us for this great adventure. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, You don't have to imagine what a great inland ocean would look like, you just have to experience Lake Superior. The Queen of North America's five great lakes is the world's largest freshwater lake and also the largest cold water lake in the world, home of the Coaster Brook Trout. The rugged beauty of the area is breathtaking. This is, this is wild country. Wildlife from bear to moose to lynx are found in this area, along with bald eagles and many other species who thrive in this incredible and diverse landscape. It is no surprise then that it would also be the area that produced the world record brook trout caught in Lake Superior's Nipigon River in 1915. Though the population of these large brook trout almost disappeared in the early 1980s, major initiatives are now bringing back these magnificent fish, not only to the Nipigon River, but expanding and reclaiming their historical habitats along the shoreline of Lake Superior. Mark Melnick and I were guests of Gary and Leanne Lang, owners of Bowman Island Lodge and Charters. For this adventure, we are casting streamers and searching for coaster brook trout and lake trout. Bowman Island Lodge is situated on an outer island south of Nipigon Bay and is about an hour's boat ride from the dock in Nipigon, Ontario. Nipigon is approximately an hour's drive from Thunder Bay, Ontario, along the Trans-Canada Highway. We drove to the dock in the village of Nipigon and met with Gary, his wife, Leanne, and their Irish setter, Bridget. Once gear was stored and everyone was on board, we headed south into Nipigon Bay towards the narrows that open into the open water of Lake Superior and Bowman Island. Thank goodness for radar and good bathymetry maps. The trip was uneventful and we soon saw the lodge emerging from the fog. Once docked, we unloaded our equipment and helped Gary and Leanne bring in the supplies for our time at the lodge under the watchful eye of Bridget. We quickly settled in and began to prepare our equipment and flies for the next day of fishing. The fog began to lift later in the day, but unlucky for us, a big storm blew in with very heavy rains near dusk that lasted for a few hours. Hmm, typical weather for this part of the country. The storm and the clouds cleared overnight and the morning arrived crisp and cold with a temperature of only 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which rose to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit later in the day. After a great breakfast of pancakes and bacon, Gary agreed to take us out for the morning to show us around and discuss the behavior of coasters at this time of year and tell us what we needed to know and where we should be concentrating our fishing during our stay.
So Gary, so what are we looking for here? What's We're looking, looking for that cobble that's coming, you know, off the beach into the water, and it normally comes out to, you know, three, four feet of depth, and then after that, it sort of drops off to sandier soil. But uh, the the fish hang, they're in there, right in that structure, looking for the skeleton and the minnows. When are the fish moving in here uh, into the, in the spring? When do they move into the shallows? Well, in here, uh, you know, it depends on the, how the season is. We're a little early this year, but usually Victoria Day weekend or the week before, uh, they start moving in. And uh, it, it's more dependent on the water temperature. As the water temperature starts coming up uh, to 44 degrees Fahrenheit and higher, then they start moving in. Got one. Fish on. Okay, he, he hammered it just as I was stripping into it, just, just off a of big boulder. Beautiful fish. He hit hard too. I'm just gonna move out a bit. Okay, I'm using a, a I'm using a soggy bog. Yeah, okay, whoa, that's good. Okay. Woohoo! Yowza! Oh, beautiful, beautiful brook trout, beautiful coaster. Okay, here you go, sweetie. Here you go. Let's see what fly. I was using, I was using a, a sculpin imitation called the Soggy Bog, designed for coaster brook trout by a gal friend of mine, Sal, Sylvia D'Amelio. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I was just stripping, just just tight, yeah. short, tight little strips. Yeah, yeah. Short, short ones is what you, yes. know, you want. They're uh, because it's so cold. I don't think they're that active to, re right. to really chase. Yeah. So you don't want a big strip yeah. well, with this temperature. Yeah. You want a shorter, tighter strip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my I'm using a sculpin imitation, so they're not great swimmers. So that when they they dart, they dart yeah, short. Yeah. They're just build yeah. yeah. So you want to you want to give them a short, tight strip. Oh, I see them. Fish on again. Yeah. They're in here. Okay, this time I'm going to get the heck out of the way. That was a little bigger. Yeah. Okay. Woo! -hoo. Oh, I'll Boy, just put, it, nice I'll put it reverse it back up so that it stay out of the rocks here. Yes, please. Yeah, that fish. Whoa, here he goes. Ho, ho, ho. He wants to go. Yeah, he, he wants to go. It's second. Here we go. Let's see how he goes. Short, tight strips. Okay, Let's see if I can get his head up. Not yet. He's not quite ready yet. Okay, yes, come on, buddy. Let's see if I can get him away from the boat there a bit. Uh oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Got him? Awesome. Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful brook trout. Beautiful coaster brook trout. This is what you come up to Northern Ontario for. Come on, you little sweetheart. Here we go. Oh, here, there he goes. <laughs> Woohoo! On. Okay, fishing just off the point there. Fish hit like a ton of bricks. There's a couple of big boulders there. I'm using a sculpin imitation because around these boulders is perfect sculpin habitat. So these fish are looking for sculpin. This guy's, yeah, nice little, nice little coaster. He's going off. He wants to go somewhere. I'm just going to try to get him on the reel. Oh, there he goes, and he's on the reel. So the big boulders with lots of cobble drop-offs, perfect, perfect, perfect sculpin habitat, or some people would call them muddler habitat. Come on, big guy. Here, there we go. Another beautiful Lake Superior coaster. 
This is what you're, this is what the money's for. This is all what it's all about. Beautiful fish. Well, we started uh, about 15 years ago, or maybe even a little more. They, uh, the ministry asked us to to, to start tagging uh, the fish we uh, catch, and uh, what they wanted to do to see if uh, what the recapture rate was, and then uh, see if they could determine the range they covered. Some of the tags have been caught 50 miles away, and we've had you know recaptures uh, even over three years of the same tag. So it's uh, it's been successful that way, and then. Uh, for a few ways, they actually had us taking the little clip, uh, fin clip, so they could do genetics on them. And uh, so it's, uh, now they've said that we really don't need to do it anymore. They've got enough information that they're reproducing and moving and, uh, you know, their territory has widened out. Uh, you know, originally they were here within about 10 miles of here. Now they're, we know that they've, they're moving and spawning, you know, 70 miles from here, so. The reproduction has been fantastic. Oh, yeah, right at the boat here. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, I felt the like tap, I said, tap. They Whoa. like this hole. They like this hole. Yeah, <laughs> you can see that. Yeah, that fish was, if I, follow, if I trucked it right into the shallow water and he followed it right all the way up here. Wow, what a nice fish. That was a nice one again, yeah. He doesn't want to come in. Come on, big boy. Oh, he wants to go back into the hole. Yeah. I don't blame him. That's home. Wow. There might be a bit of an upwelling here underneath or something. Yeah, I could like believe that. This... Oh, he. Oh! oh! Oh, well. That was a, that was a nice one, though. Was... I think that was, <laughs> that was big, a nice the biggest fish. one so far. Yeah. Well, that's okay. The fact that they're on the bite is a good sign. Yeah, yeah. You want to go curve around and go back? Or should we just carry on? Yeah, we'll just carry on because you guys will be coming back and working it again. Oh, yeah. With fishing available within sight of the lodge, it meant that we could easily take our meals in the relative comfort of home base. Habitat complexity is often key to the requirements of many fish species. This is certainly the case for brook trout that move into the big waters of Lake Superior and cruise or coast along the shoreline. These fish are looking for habitat that varies in depth, drop-offs, shoals, and shallows. Mix into this the bottom structure that provides food and shelter for the prey species that these fish wish to feed upon, and you have the perfect combination for quality habitat. All these features are found in abundance along the shore of Lake Superior and provide critical habitat for the sculpins, sticklebacks, and smelt that the coaster brook trout and other species feed upon. Another major ingredient, especially for summer thermal refuge and spawning, is abundant groundwater. This type of water along the shoreline of Lake Superior is often called black water. The water is not black, but stained dark brown as a result of rainfall and snowmelt filtering through the landscape and being in contact with organic soils, capturing tannins and organic carbon. This groundwater not only maintains a relatively constant temperature, which can help the fish cruising in the shallow areas in the summer, but is also the key ingredient for brook trout spawning success. After lunch, Mark and I headed out on our own. We decided to continue along the coast that had been successful that morning, targeting the cobble and rock shoreline, rocky outcroppings, and major points in shoals. There we go. Yeah. Good one too. Yeah. So I switched over from 
a sculpin pattern that I was using this morning to a, uh, a white leaf pattern, minnow, uh, with a black cone head. And uh, it's worked. First fish of the afternoon after lunch. Nice fish. Oh, beautiful. Hey, he's colored up dark, hey? Dark oh, yeah. fish. He's Got him. Oh, he's a thick one. Oh, he's got a tag in him too, cool. Now he's been eating because he's got something very big right there in his belly. Nice fish, 16, 17 inch brook trout. Absolutely fantastic. All right, we're gonna get him back. Whenever you're on a, on a, uh, a boat by yourself with another fly angler and, and one of you is piloting the boat. Um, always keep in mind that it's easiest on both anglers if you engage the engine or you move when the, when the angler's casting. Um, once the angler has the, uh, the fly in the water and you're moving the boat, you're effectively messing up the retrieval. Uh, and it's a real adjustment for, for both anglers that um, are in the boat. Um, case in point, if I'm casting, and the boat's still, and then the driver engages the engine, I've got all kinds of forces against me that are creating slack, including backwards movement, a belly in the line, and uh, when that big fish hits, you're gonna have a lot more trouble setting the hook on it. So, if you're the captain, put it in neutral. While they're fishing, while the anglers are casting, engage the engine and then back into neutral to stop the boat again. Everybody will be much happier in the boat. Guarantee you this. The white streamer seems to be the ticket this afternoon. Amazing. And in this water, I mean, we're sitting at 47 degrees. All they want to do is fight. See, there's no quitting this. This is an eight weight. Not quite ready yet. Here we go. Got him. Good brook trout. Best one of the day. Whoa! Woohoo! It's nice fish. Caught on a on a, on a woolly behind the sculpting pattern. Oh my goodness, powerful fish. Slow strip this time, very slow strip. Okay, I think he's ready for the net. Woo! Look how fired up he is. He is a strong fish. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What a beautiful coaster brook trout. Another beautiful one on a beautiful day. Time to get back in the water, big guy. Oh, beautiful, beautiful coaster brook trout. So the technique that I'm using is I'm casting into the shallows, which are about, about three feet, two to three feet of water. And we're working the fly with short, sharp strips back into the deeper water. There's a sharp drop off with the, and the drop off has large boulders in it. So the fish are either cruising in the very shallow water or sitting right at the drop off. So they're looking for that fly to come off the shallows and easy prey. They're using a technique called ambush. So they're trying to ambush the, uh, the fly or the, uh, the bug, or I should say the, the minnow that they think it is as it comes off the shallow water into the deep water. Fish on just right at the shallow where it dropped off. Oh, nice fish, beautiful colors. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Okay, big. Boy, a big, holy man, oh man, oh, oh, oh. oh holy, oh, he wants to go to open water. Jack, that's the kind of fish they make stickers out of, man. Oh man, y'all yeah, say, whoa, oh, 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 oh. beautiful, beautiful fish. What was your retrieve? Short, sharp strips, very short. Wow, what a fish. Okay, I think he's almost ready for the net. Woohoo! What a fish! 
What a fish. Look at that. Look at the coloration. Looks like a big male. Now that is a brook trout par excellence. With the evening descending, we could see that the weather was changing again. Should be an interesting day tomorrow. Our hosts while at the lodge were Gary and Leanne Lang and their dog Bridget. I had the chance to chat with Gary about the lodge, its amenities, and this great area of the province. I, I built the, the lodge that we're uh, on the deck of about 15 years ago, but I, I started developing the property about 40 years ago. Well, the lodge is capable of housing uh, six to seven people in the lodge, four bedrooms uh, with uh, twins and doubles in them, and uh, in the outbuildings I can do another four to six people. The food can either be supplied or you can have your own. So I, you know, I do do the American plan, but if you prefer to do your own cooking, if you're coming for, you want your own special diet, you're welcome to do that as well. I built it here because I fell in love with it uh, 50 years ago. Uh, when I first started coming out here, it's, it's so uh, isolated, unique, and uh, the fishing has improved to the point where, you know, you want to be out here fishing for the whole summer. Morning arrived with a beautiful sunrise, but it also brought a change. Clouds rolling in and strong wind blowing from the south signaled that we would experience heavy and choppy swells from the main lake. Gary suggested we try an inlet stream to the east, around the corner and further away from the lodge. The area could be a great spot for fishing, he said, but was exposed to the big lake. He suggested we try it early in the day before the swells and the chop strengthened. Got something. Fish. Fish on. Had a tap a moment ago and there we go. So Jack, Gary tells me that this is a spot where you can really catch big fish. How does it feel? It feels big. And it's, this fish has got attitude. Oh yeah, here he goes. Yes, Gary told us that we can catch anything here. He said the fish come in, all, all the species come in here. It's a seasonal stream, but this is a great time to be here. Oh, he's, he's, he's deep. Come on, big boy. Come on. Okay, here, just bring him in. Oh! Good fish. <clears throat> Great fish. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful, strong, strong brookie. Okay, here's what we've here's what we came for. Beautiful Nipigan brook trout. Coaster. Just amazing fish. Powerful, powerful fish. Fish on. This is a little guy. I chucked it in right behind uh, that boulder. There's a little bit of still water, and I pulled it out of the still water into the fast water, and he hit almost right away. Here he comes. See, I'm just oh. I'll see if I can turn his head back. Here we go. Wowzer. Thanks for the netting. Look at this fish. In most parts of the world, this would be a trophy. Here, it's a little guy. Isn't this amazing fishery? Oh, Jesus, got another one. Oops. Oh, lovely, lovely. Again, a short, sharp strip with a, with a muddler imitation. Nice fish. Oh, I think it's my best yet. That is beautiful. Coaster brook trout, the best of Nipigon, the best of Lake Superior. Iconic species for this lake. So we just had an amazing hour or so of fishing where 
down the lake from Bowman Island Lodge, uh, just on the edge of the big lake. We moved into a small cove where there was a small little intermittent stream that is flowing heavy right now after some heavy rains from a few nights ago. This is a, this is a hot spot. The reason for that is that the, all the various species of fish here, brooks, brown, uh, brooks uh, lake trout, rainbows are looking for feed. These streams are flushing all food off the landscape, uh, uh, bugs, other minnows and so on. So they're moving into these areas where these uh, little creeks are coming in and that's a hot spot biologically, ecologically, and from a fishing standpoint. Although the fishing was amazing, the big lake was sending bigger and bigger swells and winds were getting stronger. We thought it best to get back into the relative shelter of the big lake between Bowman Island and the island to the south and fish there for the rest of the day. We tried other small inlets and shorelines as we worked our way back towards the lodge. There's a lot of water to cover here and uh, we are maximizing our chances at catching coasters by picking high percentage spots. So if you look ahead of me, the, the shoreline is actually a fantastic indicator of what to look for because what you see on the shoreline is generally what trickles out into the water. So here we've got nothing but cobble beach um, for another probably 50, 75 yards, and then we start to see broken rock, and we start to see boulders. So we're gonna reverse and cast to the shoreline until we get to those, those boulders, because assumedly those boulders are gonna come out, that's the boulder, boulder field that these brook trout are gonna relate to. All this stuff is pretty much featureless, so maximize your chances, go where the fish like to hang out, structure, right? It's all that matters. But don't discount throwing bombs to shore because while you're getting there, you never know when you could come in contact with one of these cruising coasters. Fish. Fish. Excellent. Nice. Oh, nice one. Yeah, nice silver brookie. It's a brook, all right. So I cast right to shoreline. Like I'm talking right on shore. And, uh, you know, that was recommended by Gary. He said, don't be afraid to put it right on the shoreline to, uh, to get these fish to react to it because they're cruising super tight. And, ooh, and uh, that's what I did here. Put it right against the shoreline, actually turned to put the, the engine into reverse, pause that fly, and this fish picked it up on the pause. And here we go. There we go, man. Awesome. Here we are. Nice 17 inch fish, adipose fin, the modeling on the back just starting, red spots, don't even see any blue halos yet, but they're coming. And that leading edge white fin, just radiant. All right, let's take a look at the setup that I've got here today, fishing for these coasters. Um, I'm a little bit heavy, I've got an eight weight rod here uh, simply because of the line that I'm throwing. I'm throwing an intermediate uh, sinking line uh, and I need to have a little bit of backbone. Plus, you know, if I want to throw some bigger streamers, I can do that as well. So um, an intermediate line sinks, sinks about six inches per second, loop to loop to a straight shot of 25 pound fluorocarbon. And then from there, triple uni knot to three feet, of 12 pound fluoro to the business end, conehead, woolly bugger type fly, um, doing really well for these fish. Gets down, the intermediate sink tip allows you to retrieve your fly at a certain rate based on uh, how deep you want it. So the deeper you want it, obviously the slower you go. So that's the setup for these coaster brook trail. We were once more into a change in the weather later that afternoon and early evening with amazing cloud formations rolling in. It was time to call it for the night and see what the next day would bring. The coasters of Lake Superior have had a challenging time over the last century, but the fish have come back and are still expanding into their historical range. I had a chance to speak with the architect of this recovery, retired Ministry of Natural Resource and Forestry biologist and good friend, Rob Swainson. My goal was to 
try to bring back a fishery to the point where people could go out, spend a day fishing, and expect to catch a memorable sized brook trout. My goal off the bat was just to try to do whatever I could to stop the decline. Number one was to stop the overfishing. So to do that, I, I put tagging guns in the hands of anglers so that they could tag their own fish, could show them themselves, like I'm not there in the boat to say, hey, you caught that fish yesterday, but they tagged their own fish and then caught it sometimes an hour later, sometimes three or four times in the same season. Live release saved this fishery. There's no question about it. When that OFAH uh, Molson Big Fish contest brought in a live release category, it changed the world out here because this is where all the big brook trout were coming from. People were catching and killing them for, to win big prizes. When they brought the live release category in, live release became the thing to do. It saved this fishery, no question about it. With Rob's dedication to the species, we should see Superior's coaster brook trout continue to thrive. The old adage heard in many northern regions is that if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. And so it was on our last day of fishing. We decided we had to try the inlet stream location one more time, but needed to get there and fish before the fog became so heavy that we would have had a hard time finding our way back. But once we reached the Narrows by Bowman Island, we decided to fan cast along the shore. Fish on! I'm not sure how long we're gonna stay anymore. The fog's starting to roll in. This might be the last chance here. Whoa! He said, I think he wants to head out for open water. You gotta think to yourself, why are the fish holding there? Something to think about. Okay, man, ready? Whoa! Beautiful fish, Jack. Gorgeous fish. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, let him go. Okay. Off he goes. So, why was that fish there? Why that location? The fish was sitting right on the seam on the left-hand side of the rock looking, up, looking upstream. And the reason for that is it was in the sweet spot. There's a big back eddy behind the boulder and as such, the fish would be facing the wrong way and they wouldn't see any food, but there's vortexes coming off the side of the rock, right along that seam. The fish can sit in there, they can ride the, the, those vortexes, hold their position and wait for food, and that was the sweet spot. That's why the fish were there, and that's why we were catching them. The fog was very heavy as we headed back in the morning, but once we reached the Narrows by Bowman Island, we decided to fan cast along the shore. All right, so we came out just off the, off the lodge here and we're casting off, whoa, off this drop. And uh, I got a fish and I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a big brook trout. It's a big brook trout. Look at this, right off the dock. So close to the lodge. You know, the lo lodge owner, Gary Lang, got his personal best brook trade off this dock, a 26 inch fish. I don't think this is gonna go 26, but it's a good one. Nice grab, Jack. Look at this, right in front of the lodge. Doesn't get any better than this. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Cameron, look how thick this fish is. Oh my gosh. Bowman Island Lodge Brook Trout. Coaster Brook Trout. On fly, can't be beaten. Fish. Fish. Fish on. Nice. Well, we've been spending a lot of time on that side of the lake and we decided we'd come on and actually fish Bowman Island. Uh, the structure is similar. We've got uh, 
very rocky shoreline, rocks come out and then there's a drop off and these coasters are coasting along the drop off. So switch flies, put a, look how silver that guy is. Put a brown, about a two inch bunny leech on with a cone head and uh, we're into them on a foggy day in Bowman Island. It is idyllic. Hey Jack, what's it, well, you know, this cold, cold water here, you know, is that is that really beneficial for fighting fish in the in the cold water? Does it does it really not tire them out or build up as much lactic acid? Absolutely. These, these are cold water fish to begin with. They require these temperatures. It gives them a lot of energy. And it's their optimum physiological temperature, so they're feisty as heck, and they, they don't uh, generate as much uh, uh, exhaustion enzymes when they're fighting like this in this type of weather, so that they can fight very very hard. Beautiful fish, by the way. Look at the battle wounds on this guy. Gary had marked a shoal to the west of the lodge, around the island, and suggested that the lake trout may be another option for our day. We decided to give it a go and anchored on a shallow dome of rock that marked the top of a shoal with deep water surrounding it. Fish. All right. Nice. <laughs> Lake trout on the fly. Now we've found these isolated humps in the middle of this bay. And they come up to three feet on top and they drop off to 14 down below. And what we're doing is we're up on the high, high side, casting into the deep and bringing our flies back up the gradient. And these lake trout are coming up and grabbing it as they go. That's about my fourth cast. I got a nice laker on. So one of the things about lake trout, as you'll notice, is they go straight down. I'm gonna bend in that rod, just straight down. Here he comes. Oh. Good one. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, here you go, man. He's a fighter. So if you ever get bored fishing for coasters, which you won't, but you have the fantastic distraction of hunting lake trout in the deep. In the springtime, they come shallow. This one was at 15 feet. Good fight. Gonna go back to live another day. The weather for the next day forecasted squall conditions. So we thought we would try the inlet stream one more time. Fish on. Five feet up upstream of the rock, right along the seam. Somebody told me I should try that. Nice feeling fish. It's been a real challenge fishing here. There's a big slow swell going on, pushing us inshore. Very somewhat choppy, you have to be braced in order to be able to cast properly without falling out of the boat. But the fish are here. I haven't seen him yet, he hasn't come up. I just saw the white, the white leading edge of the fins. Whoa! Ho ho! Yeehaw! Excuse my language. This guy's gonna take a few minutes to come in. There he is. Hi, buddy. Woohoo! Yowza! Now that, I think, is my fish of a lifetime for brookies. Now that. Is that your biggest brook trout? That's my biggest brook trout. Bar none. Uh. Nip again. Coaster brook trout. This is what it's all about. This is an incredible fish. Icon of Lake Superior. Wow. 
<laughs> that was the biggest brook trout of my life and a coaster at that. I want to thank all of you for joining us on this episode of the new Fly Fisher here at beautiful Bowman Island Lodge on the banks of Lake Superior. For more information on other episodes of the new Fly Fisher, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Hoping to see you all on the water sometime. I'm Jack Imhoff. Thanks for watching. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>